Greetings. I'm Father Jeff Parker from St Luke's Anglican Church at Enmore in Australia, uh, near Sydney, in the West. And I'm going to share with you today a reflection uh, on this Wednesday of Holy Week. So we begin with a sentence from the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 12. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings to us so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. And a collect or a prayer for the days of Holy Week, let us pray. God of all, you gave your only begotten Son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the reading for uh, today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning at the 21st verse. Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Psalm 55, verses 13 to 15, we read this. It was not an enemy that reviled me, or I might have borne it. It was not my foes that dealt so insolently with me, or I might have hidden myself from them. But it was you, a person like myself, my companion and my familiar friend. Together we enjoyed sweet fellowship in the house of our God. Is this not the pattern for the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot? Being betrayed by a trusted companion is among the worst of human experiences. It reminds us as we follow Jesus' path through the cross that not only did he suffer the agony of what took place in the immediate vicinity of the cross in physical terms, but he also suffered the more terrible human experiences that can happen in the course of our living with others. And being betrayed is one of the worst of those. Add to this, um, all these experiences that Jesus went through as well, being deserted by his disciples, the ones that he trusted and lived with for years, being convicted of crimes because of lies, the target of jealousy, the target of deliberate misrepresentation, being completely misunderstood, having one's life uh, valued as almost nothing, and being unjustly sentenced to death at the hands of the powerful just out of convenience. It's true that at some points in our life, those low moments, we've also suffered from some of them. And that's the point though, Jesus suffers from them as well, all of them. The Son of God escapes nothing on his way to the cross. The slings and arrows of human life 
all the ones that hurt, were aimed right at his heart and every single one found their mark. He is pierced not only by the nails and the soldier's spear, but by these hurtful actions of people who for a time found themselves with power over him. I want to go back to Judas for a moment. Jesus knew what Judas was about to do. When he passes the bread dipped in the dish, that tells us that. Remember, he said to the disciple that he loved, who also told Peter, it is the one to whom I hand the piece of bread after dipping it in the dish. You will remember how we've often spoken about the special bonds that are formed and are sustained when people eat together. That comes through the Gospels all the time, doesn't it? When people break bread together, they form a bond. That's why our church communities are close usually because we break bread together and we share so much. When Jesus hands over the morsel of bread, a symbol of that sharing and fellowship and relationship, it says something. It was probably dipped in bitter herbs and salt water, which was a part of the uh, Passover feast. Jesus hands over the bread to the one who will hand him over to those who want to do away with him. It's an act of friendship that Jesus makes towards Judas, which makes the coming betrayal doubly treacherous. The bitterness of the herbs is also symbolic of the bitterness of Judas's heart. At that very moment, Judas knows that he has made the fateful decision to betray Jesus. As Jesus tells him, what you're going to do, do quickly. None of the other disciples, of course, knew what was going on at that point. And as soon as he gets up and leaves, John gives us these incredibly dramatic and powerful words. And it was night. Yes, indeed, it was a moment of utter darkness. This gospel constantly, as we've uh, shared before, it constantly contrasts light and darkness. Yet at that very moment, following the fellowship of Jesus' special last meal with his friends, this action of hate and destruction, which sets the whole passion ex um, experience in motion, leads Jesus to speak of his being glorified and of God also being glorified. Glorified by taking upon himself the sins of the whole world, enduring the pain and the shame of the cross, and then later being raised in triumph by God. To do this, Jesus will have to leave his disciples. He will leave them in death, but he will also leave them to return in the glory of his Father. Now Peter, well-meaning but weak, swears that he will go all the way with Jesus, even to death, and he speaks with good intentions. We know this, but as he is doomed to fail, in a way, it's a second betrayal. Some believe it was worse um, in some ways, because at least Judas didn't make any wild promises. Peter was rock solid in his love for Jesus, but under the pressure of fear for his own life, he will deny Jesus three times before the rooster crows. What will save Peter will be the depth of his repentance when Jesus gives him that opportunity to do so. Betrayal is a destructive thing. It tears relationships apart to the point that mending them is just about impossible. We see it time and again with family members over wills and in acts of infidelity. And true reconciliation in the wake of these things is very rare. Not impossible, but rare. Even Jesus could not mend his relationship with Judas. And the destruction which Judas' betrayal was meant to achieve, well, went forward and it actually all happened. 
and as Jesus was killed and Judas committed suicide as a result, there was no opportunity, at least in this life, for reconciliation to take place. I think it's time uh, in this journey of Holy Week to think about betrayal, to remember the pain that it's caused us over the years or to people that we have known if somehow we ourselves have managed to escape its clutches. It's a time to resolve not to follow Judas in betraying anyone, especially those close to us. If we fall out with someone, we should be honest about it, not gossip or plot for their demise behind the scenes as Judas Iscariot did. From a Christian point of view, we should think about whether or not we too have betrayed Jesus and those around us at times. Have we broken bread with Jesus in the Eucharist and then turned our back on him by the way we treat others around us? Have we promised in our confession with his help never to sin again and then gone out and done exactly what we've just confessed? Let us go forward and pray that our reflection on the betrayals that we've talked about just now will change us and help us in our relationships and that we will follow Peter in finding true repentance and resolve never to go the way of Judas. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we did yesterday, we'll finish with a couple of uh, prayers and uh, there'll be time for your own prayer as we do that. So this is the Archbishop of Canterbury's prayer for really for all people at this time of the coronavirus. So let us pray. Keep us good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, sustain and support the anxious, be with those who care for the sick and lift up those who are brought low that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. A time now for your own, for your own prayers at home. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing this reflection with me. The Lord be with you.